In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly why taking aspirin, ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil, all of these painkillers are going to prevent you from implanting your precious embryo into your uterine lining and basically preventing you from getting pregnant. Hi, my name is Susan and this is The Awesomes. Thank you again for joining me. So I have made a video about implantation and the four things that could be preventing you, preventing your embryo from implanting into your uterus. So the first one and the biggest one, the most important one that you should really take home, the message is is taking anti-inflammatory drugs. So specifically, these are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So these are things that are very common that a lot of us are taking even on a daily basis. So these are things like ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, aspirin, these things that you can just go to the drugstore and buy and take as you please. But taking these things is actually one of the biggest things that has been studied and proven to reduce your chances of, of having successful implantation. So in this video, I wanna to explain to you why exactly this is, so that there is no argument, it actually is really bad for implantation. So if this was something that had not been studied and not sort of proven, then I absolutely would not even put this in your guys' heads because I do not wanna make you stress out any more than you have to. But because this is something that is studied, um, I really do wanna get the message out there because I know how difficult it is to struggle with trying to conceive. And if this might be something that is preventing you from trying to conceive and you had no idea that that taking these medications was even doing that, then that is why I want to provide this information to you. So in my previous video on the four things to avoid uh, to prevent implantation from not being successful, in that video, the sort of statistic that I used um, when taking these anti-inflammatory drugs, I said that there could be an up to 80% chance uh, or an 80% reduction in, in the chances of implantation occurring. So the latest study that I have looked at now is the numbers are a little bit different, but it's still like pretty substantial. So this study took um, different groups of women in early pregnancy who during conception, they either took these NSAID drugs, these um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, like the ones I've already mentioned, aspirin, um, Motrin, all those things. So some of them took those drugs during around the time of conception. And then the other group, there's two other groups of women. So another group of women took acetaminophen during that time. And then the third group of women took no drugs at all during that time. The women were all on average about 39 days pregnant. And the study was looking at which women were having miscarriages. So after they took into account different risk factors like smoking and age and things like that, the results that they came out with um, still showed significantly that the women who took these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs around the time of conception had quite a higher risk of having a miscarriage compared to the women who did not, as well as compared to the women who instead took um, acetaminophen, which is still a painkiller, but it's just not that type of painkiller. So what they found was that there was a 59, 59% um, increase in the chance that uh, the women who are taking these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, there is a 59% increase that they had a miscarriage, that they would have a miscarriage compared to the women who were taking no drugs at all. And then when they were comparing um, the women who were taking the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory non drugs compared to the women who were taking acetaminophen instead, there was still a 45% greater chance that the NSAID, I'm trying to figure out a way to say this word just quickly. Um, so the women that were taking the NSAID, I don't know if I said that right, had a 45% increased chance of having a miscarriage compared to the women who were taking um, acetaminophen instead. 
So again, when they were looking at timing of taking these drugs, what they found is that the risk factor was almost completely based on women taking these drugs during the time of conception. Um, they also found that if the women took these drugs for like a longer period of time around that time, so there's obviously more in their system for a longer period of time around the time of conception and, and fertilization and implantation. Um, so the lo basically the longer they took those drugs, the worse the chances were of implantation occurring. And they also found that the risk of, mis of miscarriage um, was more likely to be within the first eight weeks of pregnancy. So why exactly do, does taking these sort of drugs, um, especially when you're comparing it to taking a, a different painkiller, um, like acetaminophen, why specifically does taking these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs increase your chances of not implanting or having a miscarriage? This is because these medications specifically, um, what they do is they re their purpose is to relieve pain and reduce inflammation. And the way that they accomplish this is by inhibiting the production of prostaglandin. So prostaglandin is actually really important for a bunch of different phases when it comes to fertility. Um, but more specifically, when it comes to implantation, you need, like you absolutely need certain levels, higher levels of prostaglandin in order for implantation to occur. So then of course, reduced amounts of prostaglandin lead to either implantation not happening or to um, miscarriages occurring in early pregnancy. So this is basically what it is. Just to go over it again, um, these, these drugs, these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, their purpose is to reduce inflammation and to reduce pain in your body. And they, the way that they accomplish that pain reduction and anti-inflammation, the way that they accomplish that is through inhibiting the production of prostaglandins in your body. But your body needs prostaglandins in order to basically be fertile. There are so many things in the whole fertilization and you know ovulation and, and implantation, all of these processes that we require in order to get pregnant, we need prostaglandins all along that process to accomplish different things in, in the whole process. So taking these drugs reduces our prostaglandin, therefore the whole process is just kind of messed up and we can't get pregnant. So if you are taking some sort of painkiller drug now and you're getting a little bit paranoid, you don't know if your drug is on this list, I am going to give you a list of all of the drugs that are included that are these non-anti-inflammatory, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, all of these drugs that you should be avoiding, especially around the time of conception, you know, up to two weeks before conception. Um, so basically your entire cycle and you don't want to be taking them during implantation either. So you, yeah, basically you just don't want to be taking them during the entire cycle when you are trying to conceive. Instead, if you need a painkiller, um, like the studies are showing, uh, acetaminophen is not, uh, not as high risk. It doesn't do the same thing that these, um, these prostaglandin inhibiting drugs do. But anyways, this is the list of drugs. If you need to figure out if whatever you're taking is on this list. So I'm just going to read through it. Aspirin, Celebrix, Cambia, Cataflam, Valterin, Zipsor, Zorvalex, Ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil, Indocin, Ketoprofen, Ketorolac, Naproxen, Aleve, Anaprox, Naprolin, Oxaprozin, Daypro, Celindec, Tomatin. So there, there's a bunch of words that I, there's other words in here that I have not even attempted to pronounce. Um, Maybe what I'll do is when I'm writing up my description, I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole list onto the description below this video. So please check that out. Um, but also an even better thing to do would just be to contact your doctor or talk to your pharmacist if you're picking up your medications um, and ask them if whatever you are taking is a sort of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and if it could be in that case, preventing um, prostaglandins to be 
produced in your body and therefore preventing you from getting pregnant. So please talk to your doctor or your pharmacist. Obviously, if you are taking anything and planning on trying to conceive, talk to both of those people, your pharmacist and your doctor, about whatever sort of medications you're taking. Even if they are not anything to do with painkillers or anti-inflammatory drugs, it's definitely very important to um, make sure that whatever you're taking is not going to interfere with the whole process of, of trying to conceive as well as interfere with the development of your baby. I really wanna get in depth a little bit here on what is actually happening um, when it comes to prostaglandins and implantation and why the lack of prostaglandins is going to prevent implantation from occurring. So as I said, prostaglandins are, are needed for so many phases of this process. So they're needed for ovulation to actually occur. They are, they are needed to help support the sperm, they are needed for fertilization, they're needed for um, the embryo to develop into a blastocyst, and then they're needed for implantation. Um, but this, the phase that I'm gonna talk about mainly right now is why they are, why prostaglandins are needed for the embryo development. And then from there I can explain the implantation part. So prostaglandins are secreted from the embryo, from the ovary, from the corpus luteum, and from your endometrium. It is needed to stimulate cleavage, survival, and blastocyst formation inside the uterine cavity. So cleavage is basically the separation of cells, um, so cells splitting and forming new cells. So when you have an embryo, you want this healthy cleavage, this healthy separating of cells, in order to get to the point where this clump of cells, this embryo becomes a blastocyst. So the blastocyst is at that stage, that is what is implanting into your uterine lining. So if there are errors in this process of this cell division, um, as your embryo is dividing, the cells are dividing, and it's growing to the stage of the blastocyst stage, if there are errors within that, then um, this is really, really going to prevent implantation from happening, or if implantation does happen and cells aren't dividing properly, then the baby is not developing properly, which has you know an increased chance of miscarriage. But before we even get to that point of implantation, so what is happening with a blastocyst when it is ready to implant into your, your endometrium, into your uterine lining? So basically this blastocyst is sending out messages to the uterine lining. So your uterine lining does have to be receptive to these messages, um, but more importantly, importantly right now when we're talking about the blastocyst and, um, and this implantation. So if your blastocyst is very healthy, healthy, perfectly fine, everything's been, all the cells have been dividing properly and it's genetically normal and all that stuff. If it's a very good blastocyst, it will be sending out signals telling the uterine lining that it is healthy, it is normal, it is ready to go, it's ready to be implanted. And if the uterine lining is receptive, then it will, it will enable that embryo, that blastocyst, to implant within your endometrium. So if cell division in the embryo was not very good, um, and now at this blastocyst stage, there's a bunch of errors in, in the genetics or whatever else through this process of cells dividing improperly, um, then this now, this now blastocyst, if it even gets to that stage, um, will try to send out signals. If there's a lot of abnormalities, maybe this blastocyst is not even able to send out signals, so the uterine lining is not getting the message that there is uh, there's a blastocyst that wants to implant, so therefore it won't implant. Or maybe if this blastocyst can still send out a signal, but it does have this abnormal cell division, um, then the signal could be weak or the signal itself could be an abnormal signal. If the endometrium is receiving an abnormal signal, then instead of being receptive to this embryo, instead it's gonna cause almost more of a stress response in the uterine lining, and that basically is, so the uterine lining's not going to be receptive to that embryo, therefore implantation is not going to happen. So that is basically the, the whole process. That is the whole reason why you do not wanna be taking these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs um, during the time of conception, as well as up to two weeks before conception, 
or if you're trying to conceive, just don't take them at all. If you need a painkiller, take something else like a, an acetaminophen. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications. I have a ton more information um, on all of this stuff trying to conceive. So thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.